Hello again and welcome back. We're just going to continue our uh, little segment of classic plastic, essentially. Uh, so the old school Tamiya kits that are still available on the market, uh, they're still really good value. This one was given to me recently uh, by a friend who knows how much I like these little kits. And uh, yeah, he thought, oh, give me one as a gift. Love it. Very, very, very excited. So we have... Marder 2 in 135 scale. So those of you that are not familiar with the Marder 2, it is basically a Panzer II chassis with either a German 75mm gun or a Russian 7.62cm gun uh, on top of it. Uh, so essentially, after Germany invaded Russia, they realised they needed uh, some better anti-tank weapons to count on the T-34s and KV-1 series. And uh, the quick solution to upgun um, some vehicles and to increase mobility in anti-tank guns was to just simply mount them onto existing chassis of obsolete vehicles. So the Panzer IIs, uh, even though they remain in production for some time, they, they were really no match for the newer Russian armour, uh, but they were quite mechanically reliable. So they used them as self-propelled guns, essentially. Uh, they had artillery pieces, all sorts of things. Uh, there was even some Panzer IIs converted as uh, flamethrower tanks, etc., etc., uh, just because they were so reliable and uh, easily they had plenty of them. Uh, yeah, so there you go. So you would have seen my Panther video, my other video on the Panzer II, and uh, we're just going to show you this kit really quickly. So what I really like about these kits is this one dates uh, back from 70, 1976, so it's been around the block. It's been here for some time now. It's, uh, what, 40 years old. Uh, however, it is still a good, fun kit to build. So you've got a nice little blurb here. It tells you about the vehicle, gives you a rundown on it. Um, now, obviously, this is the version arm with a 7.5, so not the uh, 7.62 Russian. And we'll just give you a quick, quick, quick sneak peek here at the instructions. All right. So it's a pretty simple process. You're essentially building a pack gun, 75mm pack gun, and mounting it onto the Panzer II chassis. And there you go there. So pretty, pretty simple. Now, if you're looking for uh, a good open top armor subject to try your, or to try your hand at, I would recommend this kit. It uh, goes together very, very easily. Uh, like all Tamiya stuff for the period, it's a flawless, excellent little kit uh, that would have been amazing when it came out. Now, obviously, you can get much more detail, much more accurate kits these days, but you're also paying a lot more. So if you're looking for something entry level to have a bit of fun with, this is it. It's got the standard uh, battery uh, compartment area for remote control vehicles that uh, you... Uh, excuse me, for remote control vehicles like the uh, other series do. Now, one thing that is different between this and the other Panzer II chassis is the Tamiya logo has been removed from the bottom and it's been put inside there, so that makes it a little bit easier. Still some stuff to clean up, but nowhere near as bad. All the parts except for the hull come bagged, so uh, you're not going to lose anything if it comes off a sprue, which is typical of Tamiya. And we've got a nice little decal sheet here. Very, very simple basic decals, um, not a lot to them, but they go on really well. Uh, polycaps, so we've all seen those before, we all know what they're for. And let's have a look at the top of the chassis. So essentially, that is really very similar to the Panzer II that they did, and you'd expect it to be. It's um, the same engine, same front, everything like that. They've just got the different mounting for the uh, crew compartment and the, the gun system there. Uh, all the injector marks are hidden behind, so it's all nice and easy. You don't have to worry too much about cleanup. Once the tracks are on, they will be hidden. Uh, there's two sets of instructions, one in English and otherwise. So, uh, yeah, we know which ones we want to have a look at. Uh, vinyl tracks. It is an older kit. It is going to have vinyl tracks. Uh, not individual track links, however, there's plenty of aftermarket stuff still available for these kits online. So if you wanted to put individual track links, I'm sure you could probably find a, uh, a company which manufactures them. So I'm just going to try and zoom in a little bit here. 
give you a look at the internal detail. Alright, so this is all in the filing compartment. That's internal there. Sorry about the camera work, guys. There we go. So that's, uh, yeah, all inside there. It's pretty basic. Um, that could do with a bit of uh, sprucing up. Uh, there's a few other parts, and obviously, that go in, but yeah, it's still fairly basic, but you're gonna, that's going to be mostly hidden anyway. Uh, that goes on the back of the vehicle, right? So no real internal detail required there. And then these parts here are your walls. Now, the injector pin marks are on the inside as opposed to the outside. So you can see there's some reasonable detail on the outside. The marks are on the inside. They are fairly shallow, so they're really easy to clean up. The only one that's really an issue is the one right in the corner there. And it's sort of hard to get into, and it's just because you really need to clean that out and then replace that segment with a bit of putty or a bit of plastic card, whatever is easiest for you. All right, so bits of the gun shield. Uh, that's the ammo storage at the back. It goes under this section here. All right. Pretty simple. You got your solid uh, tow cables, everything like that. Weapon systems, external stowage, all pretty straightforward. Gun system, you can get aftermarket uh, metal guns if you want to try them. It actually comes with a couple of 75mm um, rounds and some empty shells too, so if you're going to be doing a diorama, it's always handy. And then the pack gun shield here. Oh, so it's really similar to the uh, the Pack 40. It's well, it is the Pack 40, but it's uh, the build-up process of that is is identical. So it's no real different there. Oh, I'm sure there might be one or two little things, but nothing nothing major. And then the detail on the inside. Once again, there's some uh, little injector pin marks to cover up there, but it's mainly on um, this piece, I believe, that you need to worry about them because I'm pretty certain that goes over the top of that. Uh, and some reasonable detail for the gun section as well, and the breech block. So, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, typical of most kits of this period, we've got some uh, crew figures. The little guy's got his little radio set moulded on already, which is kind of unusual. Uh, don't ever recall actually seeing that before, but yeah, there we go. Uh, and that's the interior deck decking for... The fighting department, some nice detail on there. And bearing in mind, you know, this is an old kit. It's not a new kit. And the detail on it for the age is, is great. It's lovely. A uh, little engine in there. You should be able to see the back of that once it's installed. And the muffler on this has got uh, essentially like a moulded in heat shield. So they've actually changed that from, if you remember the one on the Panzer II, it doesn't have the perforations, it just has, it's just, just a solid piece of plastic essentially, so they've improved that. Uh, but the tracks, everything like that, it's all nicely detailed. Very few injector pin marks to, that are going to cause you headaches. I've pretty much pointed out everything that you need to really have a close look at. Um, some of the marks, some of the, the mould lines on the figures, there's a few seams and things to fix up, that's pretty standard. Uh, otherwise, there's very, very, very little flash on... God, I almost sounded like the guy at a police academy then. Hey. <laughs> Don't know if you remember that. I might be showing my age a fair bit, so if you're too young for that, just ignore that comment. Um, yeah, however, it's there's very little cleanup required on the parts in terms of flash uh, on the sprues and seam lines and things. Most of them are fairly neat. And the ones that are, uh, are requiring a bit of cleanup Come on, you can do it. Sorry, there we go. For the ones that are requiring a bit of cleanup, it's it's not hard to get to. Uh, fairly simple. Good, very very good. Now, I have been saying throughout this video, oh, you know everything goes together well, and this is what you need to look at. Well, I've built one of these before. Uh, I've been modelling since I was a kid. I only really started modelling armour. Uh, about 15 years ago and this was pretty much the first kit I built there was one or two uh, others that may take the cake I can't remember which one I did first now but this was certainly one of the first two at least uh, that I made and I absolutely loved it now I actually still have it believe it or not it's not the best kit because I didn't airbrush back then everything was hand brushed 
um, uh, everything was handmade and everything, but it gives you an idea of what it looks like uh, once it's completed and what sort of detail you can expect to find. So you can see, if you can see right in the back there, you got, uh, oh, I did a little scratch built radio. I forgot all about that. I did a little scratch built radio for it because there was uh, no radio in the kit. So you get the racks, but they're essentially empty. Um, you can see the engine right down in there. So you can see the back of that and that little wall I was talking about where you can add a little bit more detail to it, a bit of wiring, etc. Uh, but the inside of it comes up really nice. Now I've got this terrible little attempt at making a, a canvas on there. We're just going to peel that back so you can have a look because yeah, it's pretty average and it's sort of hiding a lot of the detail. But there's the fighting compartment. All right. So bear in mind, this is before, as I said, it's before I did airbrushing. It's before I uh, <laughs> did any weathering, anything like that. I really, really sort of. This is one of my first attempts at a tank kit, and I was stoked when I built it. And I still, I've kept it because it's a nice memory. Clarchen on the front there. Uh, my missus' name is Claire, and apparently Clarchen is little Claire in German. So I thought it was quite fitting because she might not be the biggest around the block, but she certainly packs a punch. So I thought, yep, that that suits her perfectly. I'm going to keep that. Um, if anyone of my friends or family is watching this, don't tell her I said that. I don't want to get in trouble. But yeah, you can see here, just a little bit of variety. It all goes together reasonably well. I had no problems with these tracks. I really didn't. Um, you know, a little bit a little bit sloppy on the underside where I've melted them together. But uh, hey, it's one of, the, one of the first ones I built. So yeah, not exactly an award-winning kit uh, or build of a kit. But uh, the next one is certainly going to be better. And I don't know, I might name it Little Claire as well. But, uh, yeah, love it. So there we have it. 135 scale Tamiya Marder 2. Uh, a lovely little kit. Highly recommend it. This is going to be the second one that I do. And I can't wait to get cracking. Um, you might notice I've sort of interrupted my other videos um, that I've got going at the moment to do this and a couple of others because I really want to get started on this. It's a great little kit. And uh, looking forward to building it. Uh, more videos coming very, very soon. Massive thank you to everyone who's liked, subscribed, commented. Uh, really appreciate it. It blows me away, um, the response I get from these. So thank you so much, everyone. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.